Greetings, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Cheryl Jennison DeProza, and I'm joined by some friends and colleagues today, and we're going to be talking to you about some exciting new product offerings that Sure is offering you in partnership with Q5X. But before we get into that, just a few items of housekeeping to go over. First of all, um, as you may be aware, we are not coming to you from our usual controlled environments. We are coming to you remotely from our homes due to the current pandemic. Um, so please be patient with, with us if we run into any audio or technical issues. Um, we will get through those as best as possible. Um, but as I mentioned, it's not our usual controlled environment. So we might run into some small issues. Be patient. We'll get through them. We just want to get this information out to you. Second of all, this webinar is being recorded and will be available for on-demand viewing. It takes us about a week to get that audio and video edited for public consumption, but once it is ready, I believe it will be available for on-demand viewing at sure.com slash webinars. And if you've never been to that page before, there's a lot of great uh, sessions across a lot of different audio topics, um, just a lot of great audio learning to be had at sure.com slash webinars. And then lastly, as we go through the session today, if you have any questions, please feel free to type those into the question pane. If you are joining us on the web app, um, just look for a little circle with the question mark in and on it and click on that to ask the question. Or if you're joining us via the application, the control panel, just look for that dark gray toolbar that has an orange box with a, a white arrow in it. Click on that orange box and you'll have access to the question pane. Type in any questions, but please be patient because we will hold on those until the end of the session. All right, I think that just about wraps it up. I'm going to kick it over to the, the gentlemen that are going to present to us the topic today. Take it away, guys. Hey, everybody. This is Michael Johns here, product manager for Axiom Digital. And I'm really excited today to talk to you folks out there uh, about adventure, as Cheryl mentioned, between Sure and Q5X. So what I wanted to do first is just talk a little bit about Axiom Digital as a platform. Um, and then um, we have uh, Akam Gleisner from our global business development department to talk a little bit about the business relationship between Sure and Q5X. And finally, we have Paul Johnson, the CEO of Q5X, to talk about the products that, that, that he's worked on for his company and, and, and how it all comes together on the Sure platform. But what, what I wanted to do first is just talk a little bit about uh, Axiom Digital in general. Uh, that way, by the time Paul gets to his presentation, it'll all tie up really nicely. Uh, so as you all know, because um, I'm assuming everyone is an audio professional on the call today, the RF spectrum out in the world is only getting worse. And uh, that's for a variety of reasons. One is because more and more channels are being used by artists and by uh, venues than ever before. I go out into the world and I see double or triple the amount of wireless microphones that I just saw 10 years ago out in the field. So uh, thankfully for companies like Sure and others, uh, that, that's a good thing. Um, however, uh, the RF spectrum itself is much more limited compared to the way it was in the past. And that's mostly due to regulatory uh, bodies working in tandem with their local governments to uh, auction the spectrum off to uh, different big business uh, opportunities, mostly telecom. Uh, so here we have a problem where we have more wireless microphones needing to be used, but less spectrum in order to operate them in. Um, and that's where Axiom Digital really comes in, because what we've done with Axiom Digital is we've uh, we've taken our new digital radio and uh, and digital codec and and we've really built it around RF stability and spectral efficiency and the ability for us to be able to do those things combats these challenging situations that I just talked about. And so we've done that by combining a lot of technologies that Sure has uh, brought off the shelf for the first time in tandem with a lot of things that we've been doing for a really long time. So for example, we have a new digital modulation scheme and a new digital codec, uh, but we're still doing show link. We're just doing it better than before. Uh, and we're trying to do it with unparalleled RF and the best possible audio performance. And that in a nutshell is uh, the mission statement of Axiom Digital. And so here, uh, this shows you what our platform basically consists of. Uh, the goal of Axiom Digital was to replace both the analog UHFR and analog Axiom series of, of, of products with one complete platform. And we're doing that with one receiver. Uh, here we're showing the AD4Q. Uh, that's our four channel receiver. We also have a du dual channel offering as well. And we have two series of transmitters. We have our AD series transmitters, which are considered an upgrade path from UHFR, uh, quite the upgrade. In fact, much better audio quality, uh, much better RF performance, but no show link. Um, and that's where ADX becomes the replacement to Axiant because of course, Axiant analog, um, it, one of its core foundational uh, feature sets were the fact that it has show link and ADX has that as well, um, as you might notice some unique 
uh, new new um, form factors that that support different use cases. But here we're adding the Q5X to our AD series of transmitters as well. So from a sure ecosystem standpoint, they operate very similar to the way that AD series transmitters do, with one exception. Uh, Paul will talk to you uh, later on in the presentation about the remote control functionality that Q5X has on their products. It's quite different than Showlink, but put in a complete system together, they actually work quite nicely. And uh, Paul will take you through that when it's his turn. But another thing I wanted to talk about before we get into the Q5X uh, product is just a little bit about Axiom Digital and what I call the, 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 the four key system benefits or really the four pillars of what makes any pro wireless system good. And um, of course, now that Q5X is part of the Axiom Digital platform, um, all of these premises and, uh, and, and values apply to, uh, to those products as well now. So it all starts with our radio. Um, Axiom Digital uses a new digital radio uh, that's been designed to be stable in the most challenging RF environments. And, um, and you've probably heard of, of situations all over the world where Axiom Digital has been used, where the RF uh, was challenging, where channel counts were high, and, and we're proud of that because it really demonstrates that we met that goal of, of Axiom Digital being a high performance RF product. Uh, the Q5X transmitters have uh, sure radios inside of them. So that whole value proposition plays out to these products as well. Um, audio quality is a really subjective thing. And as an audio engineer, I don't like to talk too subjectively about this. Um, but what I can tell you is that the goal of Axiom Digital was for these products to sound as much like a wire as possible. I think they do. If you take a, uh, a handheld SM58 and compare it to a wireless SM58 in the Axiom Digital platform, most people can't tell much of a difference at at all, um, and that's a good thing. But I encourage anyone who's interested uh, to to take that challenge yourself and and uh, see for yourself uh, how much like a wire uh, Axiom Digital really sounds. Of course, the Q5X transmitters use the same audio circuitry um, as well as the as the the codec and radio. Uh, so no change in audio quality with the Q5X products. You get the same Axiom Digital core benefit of really great digital audio quality there as well. Um, of course, command and control is an important part of any modern wireless system in today's, uh, today's world. Through wireless workbench, through the ability to control things over Showlink, and through Mic Commander, which is Q5X's platform, uh, and um, having chargers that are networkable and controllable, all take the ecosystem and make it so that uh, our users can control these products remotely, which um, unfortunately in today's times are going to be even more of a need than ever before. Uh, it'll be really important for us to be able to have uh, solutions for A2s to be able to control products without actually touching clients, and command and control is a really important aspect of that. If you can control a transmitter on your phone or on a mic commander or on Workbench, that means that you don't have to have an interaction with the with talent, um, which these days may be uh, maybe not permissible, um, at least in in our near to immediate future. Hardware and scalability, another really important thing. Um, if, you've, if you've already bought in, so to speak, on the Sure ecosystem and you own a bunch of our chargers and batteries, uh, chances are they work with the Axiom Digital AD or ADX platform already. And, um, and bringing Q5X into that ecosystem allows us to have all of these common elements, chargers, receivers, um, access points, but offer different unique transmitter capabilities depending on your use case. Um, not everybody needs a, uh, a Showlink enabled transmitter. Not everybody needs a transmitter that's flexible. Uh, some people prefer to have a transmitter with an antenna on it versus one that's embedded inside of the unit. Um, those are all options and scalable options that we offer within the uh, Axiom Digital ecosystem as a whole. So here's a little bit about the back panel and some key features that I like to talk about. Um, you can see here at the top, oops, excuse me, there's a front panel and a back panel view. Uh, things that I like to highlight are digital products like Axiom Digital allow us to have a channel uh, quality meter. The channel quality meter works in tandem with the RSSI meter. An RSSI meter might only tell us this relative signal strength, but it doesn't tell us the relative goodness of the signal. And that's what the channel quality meter does for us. Um, of course, we it's a true diversity product uh, like Axiom and like um, UHFR. However, we're doing it in the digital domain. So instead of us combining an ever-changing analog, uh, analog modulating waveform and combining that, we're actually combining digital ones and zeros. Um, and we have high density mode too, uh, which a lot of people know about already. It offers up to 47 channels and, and six megahertz of bandwidth, uh, which, is, which is huge. 
And of course the Q5X transmitters will have that capability as well. So you will have HD mode and all of these features quite, uh, quite frankly, such as encryption. Um, lots of ways to get audio out of an 84. Um, and you can do these all at the same time. You can operate AES3, Dante, and, and analog um, all at the same time out of an Axiom digital receiver uh, with only two milliseconds or less of latency, uh, depending on your, your, your audio input and output conversions. You might have slightly more latency. You might be able to get a little bit less, but from analog in to analog out, it's, it's two milliseconds. Uh, lots of functionality with Workbench and the Channels app. Um, of course, the brains behind the operation is our spectrum manager. That's what does complete uh, command and control of, um, of frequency deployment. The spectrum manager will essentially uh, manage backup frequencies in what we call a coordinated frequency list and deploy frequencies automatically or manually at the user's choosing, um, which is a great way to avoid interference in a, in a high stakes environment. We're not only using Dante for our audio outputs, we're also using it for really cool things like Dante Browse and Dante Q. Um, Dante Browse is a feature where the receiver essentially acts like a, uh, a Dante browsing device just via the headphone jack. You can listen to any single channel that's on your uh, Dante network. Essentially, if it shows up on Dante controller, you can listen to it right through the headphone jack. And we have Dante Q as well, which is a feature that allows us to um, take the different transmitters and, and have them routed to receivers. And those receivers can all be listened to via one headphone jack. So for example, if I have a rack of 10 receivers, I can be in headphone jack one, and I can set up the Q feature in such a way to where I can click on all of those different transmitter, or all those different receiver channels and listen to the audio coming from one, uh, one headphone jack. So a really useful feature there. Um, and of course, all of the, tra the, the rechargeable batteries that Axiom Digital come with, um, offer network charging as well. So you can purchase a charger, either a tabletop charger or a rack mount charger that will allow you to uh, display the battery life and the status of the batteries through wireless workbench and through channels. Lots of hardware and scalability. Uh, the tuning bandwidth in the United States anyway of an 84 is the entire UHF bandwidth and the transmitter matches that bandwidth. So no need to mix and match transmitters with receivers. They're both um, 130 plus megahertz wide in the US. And of course that varies by region, uh, but generally we have a transmitter that covers the entire usable band in most countries. Um, and if not, we cover it in two. Um, AD and ADX compatibility. Now with Q5X, uh, we have a, um, um, a third transmitter type that's also compatible with our receiver as well. And of course we're building on that existing ecosystem that I mentioned too. Uh, and we're going to continue to do that. I think Q5X is a really great example of us continuing to build on an ecosystem that already exists. Um, it's one other unique form factor that Paul will tell you about that allows us to um, uh, bring into the family of, of Axiom Digital products. So in terms of the tuning bandwidths, these are the tuning bandwidths of Axiom Digital products all over the world. And the tuning bandwidths that I have highlighted in red are the ranges that uh, Q5X will be supporting um, out of the gate. G56 is for Western Europe, G57 and G57 plus are for the United States and Canada, and K55 is for uh, parts of Europe as well. Uh, later on in the business part of this presentation, we'll talk about plans to roll out more bands around the world. Um, I should also mention if you're a Part 74 user, uh, you can use the X55 band, which operates in the STL band. Um, sure requires you to, to have a license in order to purchase that band from us. Uh, but that will be a Q5X offering as well. So all of these bands that you see highlighted in red will become Q5X offerings when we go to market. So just a few quick things about the AD transmitters before we do the deep dive on Q5X. Um, AD comes in obviously a handheld and a body pack. The handheld either comes in a black or a brushed nickel. Not every uh, handheld is offered in brushed nickel, only KSM-8 and KSM-9, um, but if that's a type that you choose to use, um, you know, KSM-8 and KSM-9 looks pretty nice on the top of a brushed nickel, if you ask me. Um, and then the 81 comes in two varieties as well. I have the TA-4 version here, uh, but we also make a three-pin Limo version as well, uh, also um, part of the ADX offering there. Um, ADX is where you get enhanced functionality. You get Showlink, uh, some unique form factors, such as the micro body pack, uh, frequency diversity as well. Um, if, if you're a frequency diversity user, 
we have a handheld that can transmit two frequencies simultaneously, or we have setups where you can use two body packs, um, either with a single lavalier or with two lavaliers for dual miking applications. So tons of flexibility. Um, the micro body pack is the first body pack in our space or in our market that has an internal um, auto tuning antenna. Um, lots of information online about that as well. Um, but it's, it's a crowning achievement, if you will, of our platform. And of course, the access point, which allows complete remote control over ZigBee or 2.4 uh, to uh, transmit and receive signals in between the network and in between the various transmitters uh, in the ADX platform. So uh, with that, I'm going to hand it on over to Akim Gleisner, who is currently in uh, Germany right now. Works, working on our business development team, and uh, we'll share with you some information about the business model on Q5X and how we've arranged that. Akam? Thanks, MJ. Uh, that, was, that was very interesting. And uh, as you all have seen, Accent Digital is already a, a pretty versatile and leading wireless system uh, we introduced a couple of years ago. And uh, we, we thought, well, how can we expand the reach and how, how can we uh, even go for more and more exciting uh, application in some niche markets? And I'd like to give you a couple of uh, background information. Would you advance the slide, please? About uh, the project we do with Q5X. Um, of course, in the industry, you know each other, and we saw that. Uh, Q5X is a trusted brand for niche applications in, in sports broadcast, but also in reality TV with their unique form factors of transmitters. Now, Q5X had a, uh, a challenge to overcome um, as their customers, primarily those uh, professional customers in, in American sports leagues, were now asking for encryption and for digital wireless transmission beyond their existing analog trend, uh, transmitters. The um, leading system, which you just uh, saw with Accent Digital, is a potential partner for that and is already being accepted in all broadcast theaters, live applications. However, for these sports applications, we didn't have the suitable form factors when it comes to waterproofness or primarily in sports uh, safety of the athletes so we talked to q5x and they talked to us and and we said well why don't we combine strength and why don't we create uh new transmitters combining the versatility and the performance of the radios of accent digital and the form factors which have been used for years and years and years in sports broadcasts from um, based on the existing analog Q5X transmitters. Just combine the best of both worlds, and this is what we did. So we now have um, a new range of transmitters which are available to users. The good thing is that in the past, Q5X customers using their transmitters have already been used to work with two worlds and two brands as the analog Q5X transmitters, which you now see in the market in a lot of applications, are compatible with sure receivers in the analog world, UHFR receivers, which, however, we discontinue due to the generation change into digital. So for certain applications, we needed a new transmitter packaging, and this is exactly what we did combining the strength of Shure and Q5X. Next slide, please. The user benefits, apart from your use, you're already used to use uh, Q5X and Shure transmitter, uh, Shure products in the past, is the, primarily the flexibility and the form factors. Now, apart from the current Sure branded transmitters in Accent Digital, which you saw on MJ slide, you now have additional ones for certain applications, like in reality TV, you sometimes need a completely waterproof transmitter, or for sports, you need a soft bendable transmitter, 
for the athletes or you you need certain application certain form factors also for coaches and referees these are now available and the good thing for the user is you can use the new Q5X branded transmitters in parallel to the sure transmitters on the same receiver rack so there is no need to run two systems uh, in parallel frequencies are coordinated amongst each other and it's a seamless combination between two brands and between the Q5X transmitters and the Sure transmitters. Sometimes you need for certain application, and Paul is going to show you a couple of examples, you need very specific and very unique form factors and it's not necessarily a standard product, but it's all customization. So these products sometimes have to be done for certain application and the, the beauty and the uh, benefit of, of that project is that not just the products are radio certified or type approved, but the core, the module, which is in all transmitters is identical and that radio module is certified. So we can go from that module to a very unique, very specific form factor when it comes to a new transmitter for a certain application very quickly. And Q5X up there in London, Ontario is very vivid and very responsive and very fast doing something like that. But as I said, uh, Paul is going to show you a couple of examples. Next slide, please. Just a couple of words before I hand over to Paul about the commercialization of this new project. Sure, we'll focus on selling the player mic, which is the bendable rubber mic, and the acro mic, which is the waterproof version, through their channels, through our channel. Uh, Q5X will sell these products, but also more specific ones, more dedicated ones for certain application through their sales channel. So both channels are running in parallel um, at identical price points. So it's completely up to the discretion of the user and the customer where to buy those transmitters. Um, the customization, of course, is uh, done primarily by uh, Q5X due to the continuous partnership. So it's not a one-off. It's not just we did this and now we were split up but we will continuously work with uh, Q5X in Canada um, on new challenges, on new products. The products you see are available starting this summer, so very soon this year, um, in time with sports now coming back into broadcast. And we will start due to existing type approvals uh, FCC, Etsy, and Industry Canada, we will start in North America and Western Europe first, but we can roll it out to pretty much every region in this world, on this globe, uh, wherever Axiom Digital is type approved as of now. We just have to apply at certain volumes, but we then have to apply for additional type approvals, for additional certifications, but that's definitely doable. The main markets for right now will be North America and Europe. Having said that, now getting into the real product, and I'm more than happy to introduce you to Paul Johnson, the CEO of Q5X. Paul, your take. Digital transmitters. Sorry, sorry, Paul, you were muted there when you first started. Um, you might want to start over. And, uh, as part of that, to, to go to the next slide, please. Uh, I'd like to uh, go over some of the goals for today. We're, we're hoping, first of all, to expand your understanding, uh, to ignite your imagination, and then talk about some next steps of how you can actually get some of these uh, transmitters. But before we do that, I think the best thing is to hear it. So if we, I've got a short video. If we could just play that video now, please. So Cheryl, if you can cue our video, please. Yep. Give me just a second here. Sorry, I just need to. Hey, you look, you look. 
look like uh, one of the old players, man. <laughs> There's no way this thing still works. I poured so much water on myself. Give me a oil. Give me a oil. This is the biggest set of the season. I'm not mucking around. You've been absolutely excellent since you've been on. It's all about momentum. Don't give them no momentum to game three. You want to drive right. And then come back left at the end. Dude, look at my back. Is there a mic here? Okay, remember you had a mic on. Oh, crap. Okay, hold on. Let me get the presentation back to you, MJ. I don't know if it was just me, but I didn't hear the... Uh the audio sorry about that i heard it on my end did any okay Same maybe here. it was just me oh, I, could, I could i could hear it as well oh good maybe it was so, just me awesome continue on so if you go to the next slide please so uh, that that video just shows what we do and we've been doing that for a for a number of years and we've been doing it uh through a number of industries, but I think we're most known for our uh, involvement in sports because sports is probably the toughest environment. Uh, so what this opportunity really brings together uh, the best of both worlds and it's really proven technologies. It's proven technologies we bring together to create new products for the market. So next slide. So there's really three uh, unique uh, products that we're coming to market with now. Uh, the first, the aqua mic is totally submersible. The player mic, which is very safe and rugged and tiny. And then the uh, the coach mic, which has a, an easy to use mute switch. Um, and these will all be available uh, through uh, the Q5X channel and the aqua mic and the player mic are gonna be available through the, the Shure channel. And the one of the other features about these is they're all totally remote controlled. And I'll talk more about that later, but this is through our remote control audio system which is a unique and different remote control system than the, than the Shure uh, Showlink, but but it, it was, uh, I think, very, very applicable for the markets we're going for. Next slide, please. So there's really four variants of, of the uh, transmitter that could be available through the Shure channel, and each of those will be available in four bands. But to talk about the variants, there's the, the model itself is the QT8010, there's the player mic, and all of our transmitters have a standard battery life of eight hours. As Occam uh, alluded to, we do a lot of customization. So over the years, we've done some customization of these products as well. And these are basically the same form factors as our traditional analog products. So the player mic is available in two versions, the standard eight hour version, and then the player mic short, which came at the request of the MBA who really wanted to have the smallest possible transmitter that would last just long enough to make it for a basketball game so that it would be safe. So for to do that, we created a smaller version called the player mic short, which has a battery life of four hours and is uh, certainly one of the smallest transmitters and definitely the safest transmitter on the market. The AquaMic was similar. Uh, we had the AquaMic, which we had been used for years, and then we got requests for uh, a longer life. So we, we made a slightly larger AquaMic. It's about two millimeters thicker, and it's called the AquaMic Long Life, which is a 16-hour battery life. And you can imagine there's many opportunities when having a small body pack, and even though it's larger than the AquaMic, it's still one of the smallest body packs on the market uh, that has a 16-hour uh, battery life. So that's you can imagine the advantages of that. All of these uh, batteries are lithium polymer batteries. Uh, to be totally rechargeable and the units are sealed. So the batteries are not replaceable, but totally manageable through the remote control system. So you can really maximize the runtime of your transmitters. Next slide, please. So I'll talk now about some of the different form factors. I'm gonna start with the AquaMic. Uh, as I said, it's available in two forms, a, a, an eight hour format, a 16 hour format, and has a number of applications. So we've done water sports, as you can imagine from the video you saw, we, we, there's a lot of water sports in, in surfing and wakeboarding that where this is very applicable. But we've had a, a, a real application of this in um, reality TV recently. And this takes advantage of the fact you can jump in on a swimming pool or a hot tub, no problem at all. But most importantly, the 16 hour format of the Aquamic Long Life is very valuable. This allows in a reality show where you're running 24 hours a day to use two transmitters and just run 24 hours a day by cycling through two transmitters. No batteries to change, 
very importantly on this, no controls on the device itself. So the talent can't play around and mess something up in the middle of a production. Uh, everything's controlled through the remote control. So uh, I think our most prominent reality show that we've done for a number of years is Love Island. And uh, we this, this transmitter has been used on Love Island for many seasons now and is used to shoot that series throughout the world. The other development we run, which, which is quite interesting for a lot of people, is in, in the United States. Uh, this is used by Major League Baseball uh, for the broadcasts, and we actually bury these in the dirt. So an awful lot of the, the effects mics that you hear, where you can actually hear the sounds of the game come from about 15 of these microphones buried in various locations around the field. So the transmitter itself is sitting underground, the tip of the antenna and the microphone element are above the surface sitting in the grass, and it allows you to mic the field as opposed to micing the players. So uh, an interesting opportunity that way. Next slide, please. So the player mic, uh, the player mic was really uh, our one of our first big ventures into uh, professional sports. We did this with the NBA, and we started with the player mic uh, probably 12 years ago, about eight years ago. Uh, we had conversations with the NBA and they were really pushing for a remote control capability. And that's when we developed the remote control audio system. So the, that allows us to have total remote control of the transmitter. There's no uh, feature controls on the transmitter itself. Everything is done through the remote control and that allows them to change the frequency if required. It allows them to uh, put this uh, and, and take advantage of the being able to turn it on and off to maximize the battery life and the runtime and therefore go to the smaller player mic short, uh, which as I said earlier, has a four hour uh, battery life. So these are um, products that have been in the market now for for a long period of time. The primary driver of this is player safety. And I think, you know, when it comes to multi-million dollar athletes, having any hard um, metal body pack on them is just not acceptable. These are encased in rubber. And if you would have seen the picture that Occam showed earlier, they're actually quite flexible. So you can bend these, they, 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 uh, you, they'll take a hit, they can bend. And if anything, they're probably a layer of protection for the athlete as opposed to posing anything of danger. Next slide, please. The, uh, the next uh, mic is the coach mic. And the coach mic is, is unique in that it has a, a very large integrated rocker switch. And you can see in the photograph in the bottom, there's a, a rocker switch behind that plastic shield. So the, the shield that is there, in fact, I say plastic is a nylon shield. The shield is there to protect the switch so you can't accidentally turn it on and off. This uh, unit is designed so it can be mounted either vertically, if we want to put it in a jack of pocket, like a lot of professional coaches do for professional sports teams, or has a belt clip so you can mount it horizontally on the belt and that rocker switch is very large you never have to look at it you can just reach down and touch it there is an led indicator on the transmitter that changes for green when transmitting it and red when it's muted so it's very obvious uh whether the, the unit is is live or not and uh is something that is certainly uh good for corporate applications or church application anywhere where you might want to uh, be able to have the user mute the mic uh, very easily. And, and the, the size and the, the, the functionality of that rocker switch makes it, you can do it with great confidence without even looking at the transmitter. Uh, the other thing with this one is again, with the remote control, if you have it used in a corporate situation, say, and someone mutes the mic and accidentally forgets to put it off of mute from the remote control, you can actually override the, the, the switch and uh, turn the microphone back on so you don't have to worry about possibly you know running on stage with a uh, with a stick mic to to give somebody uh, something to overcome the fact they've forgotten to turn their mic back on after muting it next slide so this is this is the core of our remote control system so this particular unit is uh, the mic commander it's part of the we call it our cast the remote control audio system and it is something, as I said, was developed initially in, in uh, concert with the MBA to be able to provide total remote control of the transmitter without touching it. So differently than, than uh, most transmitters, there, there are no controls at all other than purely an on off switch on our transmitters. Everything is done through the uh, remote control system. The mic commander is portable, it's very rugged. It can control up to 32 transmitters. Uh, you can have multiple mic commanders uh, controlling uh, those groups of, of transmitters. And as well, you can actually plug the mic commander into a computer and run a, a, a computer software program called Mic Control, which uh, we provide. And 
with that, you can expand up to 100 transmitters on a system. So it's a very, very powerful system. Uh, as I say, the, the combinations of the, the mic control on a computer and multiple mic commanders, you can have multiple people controlling the same set of transmitters. Uh, there's a security feature so you can lock in the, your particular transmitters so nobody else can address them as well. So it's a, a very robust, a very robust control system. This is developed, as I said, for originally for the NBA because they knew that once they put a transmitter on a basketball player, they had no ability to uh, get access to that transmitter during a game to make any changes. So if anything went wrong, they basically lost the transmitter for the entire game. This way they can make on, on the fly changes when required. Next slide. So this is basically speaking of some of the features that, that we've developed over the years. And this is really uh, not new at this point in time. These features are all available as well on the, uh, on the analog products. The two I've highlighted here are the remote control, which I've spoken of, and that remote control can work at, at great distances uh, as well. We do actually have a network version of the controller, so we can uh, use the remote control uh, from a different city even over uh, over the Ethernet uh, and over the Internet, so long as the, the, uh, the mics and, and the control system are on the same network. Uh, we can control across multiple cities or multiple locations. But as well, within a venue, we have a network gateway that can be run over Ethernet and control uh, with multiple uh, gateways uh, around a facility to control uh, uh, transmitters throughout that entire facility. The other uh, point of note is that our transmitters are sanitizable. And because our units are sealed and because they are in uh, containers that are of either a polymer or an anodized aluminum, they're totally sanitizable using an alcohol-based sanitizer. And this is a very important feature these days, particularly given COVID. So as much as we've been concerned about sanitization in the past, in today's world, that's even more important. If we go to the next slide, please. So what I've shown here in, in the middle of this slide is, is we actually, you know, you can take that transmitter, wipe it all down with alcohol, wipe down, wipe down the mic cable with alcohol and sanitize that, put it in the baggie and just give it to the talent. Because of the remote control, they can put this anywhere. Um, people uh, often will shove this uh, e even in, in, their, in their underwear uh, to, to put it in place, or they'll have a pouch or a, a belt pack, or in the cases of our body packs, they can use a belt clip. But the talent can mount the transmitter uh, in the privacy of a dressing room uh, with nobody else touching it. They don't have to worry about an A2 has uh, been touching it. A2 doesn't have to touch it at all to change batteries or make any adjustments to it. And from the remote control, and you can see this was actually taken at the All-Star Game, uh, the picture on the left at the All-Star Game in Chicago. Uh, and for, with that mic commander remote control, we were able to actually turn the microphones or the transmitters on and off from outside the dressing room and make any changes that were required. If we had last minute changes in frequency or, or, or any of the settings on the transmitter, that can all be done from, from outside the room entirely. The picture on the right hand side shows the coach mic and the coach mic actually being used by, by a woman presenter with the toggle switch, the toggle mute switch, um, on the top. So again, that's something that you can imagine uh, the, the shoulder strap is pulled back to show the transmitter, but if the shoulder strap is there, you just put your finger through the fabric and that mute switch uh, can be uh, activated. And again, an A2 doesn't have to touch the transmitter at all. So in a world where there's a lot of concern on the talent, particularly high priced talent of, of people getting too close to them, uh, this is a way to be able to totally isolate them from the technicians and still have total control of the technology of the transmitter. Next slide, please. So uh, our, our transmitters will work with really any lavalier microphone. We're very excited uh, in working with Sure to have access to Twinplex. And, uh, and those of you who have experienced Twinplex will understand just how important that is uh, because of the quality of that particular product. Our, our mics are terminated, our transmitters are terminated with a single pin Limo connector uh, for most of the products. The Aqua mic has actually got a six pin waterproof Limo connector. And these are, are connectors that are unique to us in the marketplace uh, of, of transmitters. Uh, so they do require special termination. Uh, those microphones, we, we can terminate those for anybody, uh, or we can send instructions to you if you wish to terminate them yourselves. And, and we're hopeful that over the, over the next little while, most of the major bike manufacturers will start providing 
or these are making these available with the pre-terminated from the from the manufacturer. Next slide, please. So the placement of the mics uh, is, is a relatively big deal. This is just showing an example of what we do with the MBA. Uh, we actually tape the mic you can see on the right-hand side. We tape the mic cable down to the inside of the jersey. We turn it inside out and, and tape it on and uh, put it in the middle of the, of the collar. We then place the transmitter itself, the player mic short, in the little pouch that you see in the middle photograph. And then we're able to then effectively having mic'd the jersey. We're not miking the player, we're miking the jersey. We can you can see this is a pre-game. All the jerseys are hanging up inside the dressing room. And this is all done when nobody else is there. We're not interfering with the players. We can do this hours before the game. We leave the microphones there in standby mode. Uh, the players come in, they just pull the jersey on. It's so light it only weighs an ounce and a half. The player mic short. They don't even notice that it's there. Most of them don't even realize they're being mic'd and they forget about it during the game. So this is a, a, a nice feature to stand by. If, if necessary, the, the jerseys could stay in standby for over a day and still be fine uh, come game time. And as I said, they, they will, the players put them on, they go out the court, we turn the transmitters on. If we choose to put them off at halftime so they can have confidential conversations in the dressing room, we'll turn them off at halftime, turn them back on when they come to the court. And the remote control gives great flexibility, and great control of that. The nice thing about the handheld mic commander is you can walk around with it and you don't have to have a pre-installed gateway to uh, pick any location. You basically just, as long as you can get within uh, 40, 50, or even 100 feet of, of the of the talent, you can control the microphone, you can follow them around where they go and control them as required. Next, please. Occamant alluded to the fact that we can do custom products. And I think the reality is all of our products at one time started out as custom products that came as special requests from broadcasters or sports leagues that had a special need. And we, we designed these products to satisfy that need. And that continues to happen. So I've shown here a couple of photographs of things we have done in the past. On the left, you'll see um, the insides of, of microphones that we do for the PGA. These are, in fact, golf hole mics. And so if you can imagine, uh, these units are designed to run for 18 hours. Uh, they have the transmitter inside with a couple of batteries and a whole series of, of antenna connectors that you see there. We have a, another cap that slides over top of that. And that actually sits in the bottom of the golf hole uh, and transmits uh, from the golf hole. And with that, the mic element uh, sitting on the edge of the hole, we can actually pick up conversations all around all around the green. So that's a, a great way to get conversations again without miking the player, without where we actually mic the golf course and, and pick up conversations that way. The middle photograph shows uh, buoys. Uh, these are rowing buoys and they're placed along the, the length of a rowing course. And so a, a rowing course for professional competitions is typically two kilometers long. We place these near the camera stations and uh, we can pick up the sounds of the boats going by. So we can pick up the sounds of anybody in, in the boat talking or screaming as, as the coxswain generally does. Uh, but as well, we get the splash of the paddles in the water and those kinds of sounds. And the right-hand side is, is something we're particularly proud of. Um, eight years ago, Oh, actually, 10 years ago now, uh, we were approached by Radio City Music Hall uh, with a challenge of miking the tap shoes of the Rockettes. And that's exactly what we did. So there's two versions of the of the tap shoes, a high-heeled shoe and a, a regular low-heeled shoe. Each of them, we've embedded transmitters. And these are our old analog transmitters, uh, are embedded in the heels of those shoes or under the sole of the shoe in the case of the one that you see sitting face up. So this is a very, very rugged application Equally impressively, uh, there's 300 transmitters. So with the remote control audio system, we're able to control uh, 300 transmitters and 150 pairs of shoes, and we turn them all and off, all on and off, and they're never all on stage at the same time. We share that across 80 received channels. So this gives the ability to, with one button, turn on 80 transmitters and use those 80 received channels to pick up 40 dancers and then turn them off with one button they change shoes, turn on another set of 80 transmitters in different shoes, and, sit, and from a spectrum efficiency perspective, very, very efficiently share that, those receivers across multiple transmitters that are used at different times. And the remote control audio system takes care of all of that with a single push of a button. So we're, we're very proud of that installation. It may, in fact, be the largest wireless installation in the world with 300 transmitters in one venue. Um, I, I, I like to think that it is. Next slide, please. 
as well. Uh, we talked about the three products that are going to be uh, immediately available in the Axiom digital format. These are other formats that we have uh, in our current analog product line, and they will all be available in Axiom digital as well uh, very shortly. So we have the Incognito. The Incognito is a two-piece system. Uh, we have multiple batteries with multiple battery sizes, so it's easy to change the battery if you need to. As well, it spreads the mass out. So this is particularly useful in using it in a wig for theater applications. Uh, we also can you be used in a bra uh, for uh, female talent where they're wearing very tight costumes and there's no place that you can put a, a transmitter without it being very obvious except uh, in the bra. So that's one application of very, very, let's say very popular with women uh, and uh, popular as well because of the different batteries and there's a four hour an eight hour and a 16 hour battery to go with that uh the middle one is the belt mic uh the belt mic is actually probably the smallest transmitter in the world uh this is smaller even than our our physically sized it's a bit longer a, a bit shorter should say a little bit thicker uh but it's it's a uh, less than half the size of a business card. So it's hard to judge from that photograph, but um, less than half the size of a standard business card. So a very, very small uh, transmitter and again, totally remote control. And the third one is our RefMic HD and HD stands for heavy duty. This is what we use with the NHL uh, for, for hockey referees. And the HD is represented by that big block on the edge of it. And that is a protector for the mic connector. So the mic connector actually sits inside of that uh, block on the edge of the transmitter and is totally protected from any hits that it might take from uh, the the referee being uh, falling, falling into the boards or getting hit by a hockey puck and the, the mic connector can't break. So in terms of order fulfillment, this is what we have. Um, the Shure uh, has available, you can buy transmitters and the mic commander and receivers through Shure. Uh, Q5X, you can source the transmitters, the mic commander, uh, you must get your receivers through uh, through Sure, but as well, we can terminate microphones, we can do custom projects, and as well, we have analog transmitters and all these form factors if an analog is something you'd be interested in. Next slide, please. So I come back to where we started. Uh, let's say we're very excited. We feel this is the best of both worlds, uh, proven proven technologies from both sides coming together to create uh, what we think is some of the most exciting new products out there. And with that, I think we'd turn it over for questions if there are any. Fantastic. We do have some questions. Lots of great information. So let's dive in. Uh, first question, um, someone's asking about sort of the audio quality differences between Q5X and a different wireless product in the Sureline, the QLXD. MJ, could you maybe speak to that one? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So um, comparing a Q5X digital transmitter to QLXD is just like comparing an Axiom digital transmitter to, to QLXD. From the standpoint of audio and RF performance, it's essentially the same product. And and something that we we glossed over a little bit is that Sure is actually making an entire radio and audio module that uh, we're supplying to Q5X. And Q5X packages that uh, with their, you know, unique packaging form factor and feature set. Um, but uh, it's essentially the same engine, if you will, that runs Axiom Digital. So comparing a, Q, uh, a QLXD transmitter to, uh, say, an AD1, of course, the form factors are similar. That's different with Q5X. But in terms of channel counts, in terms of the number of channels you can get on air, tuning bandwidths, they're all very different. Um, and I think... Um, you know, that, that information is pretty clear online, the difference between Axiom Digital and Q5X. Great. All right. Next question. Will encryption add latency or will it still be in the standard two milliseconds we're used to? Yeah. So uh, all the encryption that Sure does, whether it's over Q5X or whether it's over um, our current uh, AD and ADX line, uh, by the way, uh, uh, ULXD has encryption, I believe, as well. Um, these are all these are all products that... Um, uh, uh, have have AES two fifty six bit encryption and have no latency addition whatsoever. So there is no hit on latency uh, whether you're using an encrypted or non encrypted mode. Great. Next question: Are we going to have twin pack twin plex lavs available for the Aqua mic connector? Yeah. So I I, if I, well, I'll, I'll, let me let me start, and, I'd, and then definitely I'd like to get your perspective too, Paul. But what I would say is that for anyone out there that that thinks that's a good idea, um, 
you know, let us know, contact your, contact your local dealer or sales or sales rep in, in your territory and let us know. Um, of course, Paul, um, uh, can, can do them himself. And I think that you'd probably like to talk about that, right? Sure. No, I was going to say, uh, we're, we're, we're very happy to do uh, custom terminizations uh, for anybody who need, requires it as well. We have a set of instructions for anybody who has uh, a, a tech in-house who's capable of terminating the microphone. Uh, so we, we can either give you the instructions of how to do it yourself, we're happy to do it, um, or that's all, that's all is required. I think the, the primary thing is that with the Twinplex, you know, you, you get you get great sound and um, the ability to be able to to take advantage of that is something you don't want to pass up. OK, next question. I'm a newbie and I don't understand the difference between the analog and digital. And, and um, MJ, could you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, that's a different webinar, um, and I'd, I'd be, <laughs> we can spend a whole hour talking about the merits of a digital technology, and, and frankly, the, the the merits of analog because they they have their own as well. But what I can say in in short is this: um, a, a couple a couple factors. Uh, number one, uh, using a digital radio allows us to have all sorts of different ways to transmit the audio over air. Uh, you, we couldn't do an HD mode, for example, using analog technology without severely squashing the audio quality. Because when you're transmitting, according to Etsy and FCC, there's a limited occupied bandwidth that you can you can operate in. And there are different ways that you can get that audio on air, but you're limited to uh, um, a particular occupied bandwidth. So uh, using digital technologies, we can instead sending send compounded audio, and I, to that person who's asking that question, I'd encourage you to look more, seek more information about compounding schemes uh, and versus digital codecs. Um, and, and we can we could take, instead of a compounding scheme, make a digital codec um, that can uh, sound quite nicely um, with, with limited occupied bandwidth. And, and that's, that's another thing that I should mention too, is that Sure through our Sure Audio Institute has done a really excellent job of not only providing trainings, but compiling uh, all sorts of key information about the way that our products operate. And uh, Tim Veer and Gino Sigismondi, two folks that I know work in our applications group, have both published uh, really helpful um, um, books or, or brochures, if you will, about this exact topic. So I'd encourage you to take a look uh, for that information online. It's about a 70-page uh, mm -hmm. document, and it'll tell you everything you need to know about uh, analog and digital. And more. <laughs> All right, great. Uh, I've got a couple questions about this. A um, couple questions about uh, the Mic Commander and Sure Wireless Workbench. Can you speak to if there's any compatibility there? Yeah, so I'll start, Paul, and uh, maybe if you want to talk about the Q5XN. So mm -hmm. um, when you're when when you're using Showlink, you have an access point that um, is connected via Ethernet. And then that access point is is mounted somewhere what in where I like to call the field of play. It could literally be the field of play like a like a football field, or it could be um, you know where the actors generally are on a stage or in the green room, for example. Um, but it's a fixed position access point, and you connect it to your entire ecosystem via the, your computer and via workbench uh, via Ethernet. So somehow you have to get Ethernet from your switch to your access point. Um, and uh, and then from there we have this installed or, or you know it's not permanently installed because you can put it on a mic stand if you want this somehow installed access point uh, controlling the send and receive information to up to 25 uh, ADX transmitters at once. The way that the mic commander, from what I understand, works a little bit different. So maybe you want to talk about that, Paul, and how and maybe how the two might work together. Yeah, well, I think the the two are very compatible. Uh, clearly, the, the we you'll be controlling different transmitters, um, and so the uh, the Axiom digital transmitters from Q5X uh, would, would use our uh, our mic commander and our remote control audio system. So we, we actually have two uh, uh, gateways. We have a, our mic commander, which is a mobile gateway, a handheld gateway that you can walk around with and you can use, uh, as I said, to control up to 32 transmitters and you carry it with you wherever you want to go. You can plug it into your computer and it will have about a 200 foot radius around your computer if you do that. As well, we have a network gateway, uh, which is available through Q5X. It's not carried by Sure at this point in time, uh, but the network gateway operates similar to Showlink. It's an Ethernet product, and that can be set up uh, through a power over the Ethernet switch and you can put 
these gateways throughout an entire venue and you can extend it as far as you can run internet um, as well uh, as i said earlier with the uh, mic control software on a computer you can control these remotely from a different city if you wish to simply by having the entire system on the same network as long as you're on the same network uh, you can uh, sit somewhere and observe and monitor the transmitters uh, wherever you want to be and uh, and control them change frequency change uh, game monitor battery um, life and whatever from from a remote location. The the nice feature of the mic commander is is that portability. The fact that it's handheld and you can follow the talent wherever they go. So in a sporting venue, if you had gateways around fixed gateways around the the court, you could then walk to the dressing room. You could walk out to the parking lot if you want or two and still be able to control the microphone. And you've got effectively a mobile gateway in your handheld. Um, and then a follow-up question about uh, Q5X and Wireless Workbench. Um, will the Q5X transmitters appear in the Wireless Workbench devices list? Uh, so yes and no. The, uh, the Q5X transmitters will show up uh, the same way an AD transmitter shows up. So uh, they won't show up in your device list because they're not talking to the Shure 8610 access point. Um, but they will show up on the receiver's property panel. So for example, if you're looking at a receiver, um, you can see the status of the transmitter through, um, you know, it, uh, instantiating the, uh, the property panel on the receiver itself. Uh, in terms of control, um, control is done through the Q5X software. So uh, you, you're not able to control the transmitters uh, through wireless workbench. Q5X transmitters are controlled via Q5X software. Great. I would add to that, MJ, what one very nice new enhancement that we have by working with the Assure Axiom Digital Receivers is the fact that the, the transmitters themselves can be programmed through the infrared panel on the uh, on the receiver. Uh, so that that's a very nice feature. So you can actually set them up through through the mic commander or through the URTA on the uh, on the receiver. Great. Right. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Next question: Can we use more than one mic commander? Yes, you can use as many as you wish. And, and uh, so it's a simple, simple answer, yes. <laughs> Great. I've got a couple of questions um, along the lines of this next one. Um, what are your plans for an ENG receiver that can receive a digital signal? And then the f second question along the lines is, will there be an Axiant ENG receiver available soon? We use Q5X already, but would need ENG to swap to change to digital version. So, uh, unfortunately, um, if you look at our current portfolio today, such a thing doesn't exist. Um, you know, we if, if, if it's not in our catalog, if it's not in our portfolio, uh, we generally don't discuss it. So uh, I can't tell you whether or not that's even a product we have in our product development. Um, as of today, you can browse our website and see exactly the products that we offer today. When we launch new products, we typically announce them via press releases um, under different times at trade shows. So uh, if and when we do, uh, if when we d or when we do <laughs> announce such a thing, um, if or when is what I was trying to say, um, uh, you'll see an announcement from Sure. Great. All right. Next question. How does the transmitter coating react to UVC light? Can this be used instead of an alcohol solution? Yeah, a very uh, common topic. And I, I can say that what Sure is currently doing is we're, um, we're working on providing an official statement to our customers in, in short order. Um, I would recommend that if anybody has specific questions about a particular Sure transmitter and a particular cleaning agent uh, to reach out to us, and uh, we can be in direct contact about about that. Um, we realize that a lot of um, of our customers are uh, expecting some more explicit instructions on that topic. And on all I can tell you now is we're working on it. I don't know if uh, Paul has a statement on on the Q5X transmitters. We we we've done minimal testing. We've done some testing, but minimal testing with UVC. Um, I, I am not anticipating there's going to be any problems, but we, we're still doing testing on that at this point in time. Great. And to follow up with uh, what MJ was saying about reaching out to us, um, you can always go to sure.com slash contact and fill out a form there to get in touch with um, with us here at Sure. So, All right. Next question. This one's for Paul. Paul, what RF power setting gives you the 16 hours runtime with the player mic transmitter? 
this would be at two milliwatts and 10 milliwatts. We have three power settings on the Axiom digital transmitters, uh, two, or two, 10, and 20. Uh, so both two milliwatts and 10 milliwatts will give 16 hours. Great. All right. Uh, next question. Regarding the pricing that was shown in the presentation, is that dealer or MSRP? MSRP. Thank you. All right. Uh, next question. Oh, sorry. Just going through these here. Uh, what frequency range does the mic commander operate in for control, and can the antenna be remoted? Uh, the antenna. So the the, the mic commander uh, is a Zigbee radio. So it's a two point four gigahertz uh, operating with the gig, the twenty five Zigbee channels, and it, it, you can select the the optimal twenty five optimal channel of those twenty five for your particular environment. And it is possible to remote the antenna. It's a uh, SSMA connector, um, actually sorry, an SMA connector on the antenna. So you can you can use a uh, different antenna if you wish. All right, next question. Can you tell us something about the water and sweat resistance of uh, your, I believe they mean Shure's lavalier, plus the sound quality of these waterproof models? Yeah, so, uh, you know, unfortunately, I'm not the company expert on TwinPlex. Uh, my colleague, John Bourne, is. But what I can tell you is that we've, we've done a significant amount of effort to make sure that the uh, TwinPlex line, and for that matter, all of our all of our headsets and lavaliers are fairly resistant uh, to water and sweat. Uh, one of the um, things that we learned du during a uh, significant amount of research on the TwinPlex project before it came out was that obviously lavaliers get sweated frequently, and uh, despite their expensive costs, they're kind of treated like disposable items. So uh, there are moisture wicking features on the um, on the cap. Um, the cable was also designed to be able to deal with sweat. Uh, so, so anecdotally, I can tell you that a lot of effort was put into making sure that um, that our products are uh, are sweat proof. In fact, uh, John talks frequently about um, a thing called a sweat bot, which is a uh, a machine that we made in our lab uh, that mimics a human being sweating, and um, it basically places droplets uh, of what of 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 synthetic perspiration, which believe it or not is such a thing, um, on the capsule and on the 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 cable of the of the the microphone, and and obviously. Um, they they were required to pass the, the sweat bot test before they made it to market. So so gosh, in terms of sweat performance, I really can't think of a product that has had more research and development go into it than TwinPlex and and of course Axiom Digital, uh, uh, especially our uh, our micro body pack uh, is not waterproof rated, but we spent a great deal of time focusing on ingress protection there as well. Great. All right. Uh, next one is a specific Axiant Digital question. Um, is there a firmware update for existing Axiant Digital receivers to go from G57 to G57 Plus? Yeah, there was. Um, offhand, I don't have it. Uh, that number, you can find it uh, in the Sure release notes. It was uh, several, several releases ago. <laughs> I would say maybe a half dozen releases or so ago. Um, so if you update to your mo the most recent firmware, which Sure, of course, uh, always recommends, um, every transmitter in the um, Axiom Digital line, if you bought them in the United States, will you uh, operate on G57 or G57 Plus with the exception of the frequency diversity handheld. I won't belabor everyone with the very lengthy topic of why the FCC doesn't allow frequency diversity in those two guard bands. The short answer is they don't. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why G57 Plus is not available in frequency diversity handheld. Next question. In college sports, what kind of buy-in do you get from coaches and players for being miked? I would expect them not to want their private conversations recorded, and some of them swear like sailors. Paul is the expert on that. I'd like to hear what he has to say about <laughs> Me that. Me too. <laughs> well, uh, n not only college sports do they swear like sailors. So uh, I, I think the, the, most of these uh, transmitters are used in situations where the the feed is captured and used for post-production. So there's the ability to edit out any uh, obscenity um, and profanity. Um, so I think the uh, that that is 
the, the circumstance. The, the interesting thing is that the uh, the transmitters themselves are used, in, particularly in college, in multiple situations. Uh, we've had a number of colleges, U.S. colleges, where actually the coach has bought these systems to use during practice. So the ability to be able to, uh, for instance, on a football quarterback, to put a transmitter on a football quarterback, record them during practice and then use that as a debrief tool to as they go through from a coaching perspective after after a practice to uh, talk about leadership on the field. Uh, there's for the live microphones that we do use, uh, obviously they're usually combined with a seven second delay uh, so that there's the ability if there's profanity that they can uh, they can bleep out any any words that are not tended to be heard. But most most of the transmitters are used uh, to create video that is uh, captured, then then used and mixed into a, a post-production clip, much like I would have shown you at the first of this presentation. Great. All right, next question, and I know we answered this, but I'll just ask it to reiterate. Are the Q5X mics available in the X-Band? They are. They most certainly are. And I'll reiterate that in the United States, if you have a Part 74 license, um, you have uh, FCC approval to operate in this band. I think the two rules are number one, uh, you need to be a Part 74 licensee. And number two, um, you should check in with your local society of broadcast engineer coordinator. Every major city has an individual that works for the SBE that's responsible for coordinating the STL band. Technically, um, that person is responsible for giving you a frequency. Um, that may vary by city to city. And frankly, I've uh, haven't had to experience getting STL frequencies in different countries around our different cities around the country, but that's, that's my take on it. So uh, check in with the SBE. And if you have part 74, um, you should be good to go. Great. All right. Another question about wireless workbench. You might've answered this, but I'll ask it anyway. Are frequencies coordinated on wireless workbench able to be pushed via networking to Mike commander for deployment? They're not um, at present, but, um, what you would normally do in that instance anyway is you would create a frequency list in wireless workbench, you would deploy it to the receivers, and then you would sync the transmitter over IR to those receivers, and that's how they would get frequencies over. Um, if you wanted to change the frequency, um, I'm assuming you would hopefully have a backup list maybe created in wireless workbench. Just take one of those back, backup frequencies and man, manually type it into the mic commander. That's at least what would be my personal workflow. Great. All right. Is there any way to sync the commands sent from a mic commander with commands sent to an AD4 so that both transmitter and receiver switch frequencies simultaneously? No, today there's not. Um, that functionality is only available via ADX transmitters. So um, that's the ecosystem that, that uh, unfortunately, today is only going to allow you to have that complete control. Uh, but, but you get awfully darn close if you have wireless workbench and a mic commander right, right next to you, which you can because it's portable. Um, you can, you know, it's a, it's a two button press deployment uh, versus, you know, workbench doing it all for you. Um, but it can happen pretty, pretty fast. You essentially would find that new frequency in a workbench, send it to the receiver, type it into mic commander. You know, maybe versus 30 milliseconds, that's like two seconds, but that's still a lot faster than having to ask the talent to get their transmitter to change their frequency, hand it back to them. Uh, so fairly seamless. Great. Without being able to sync the transmitter to a receiver channel, how would unique channel, channel encryption work? Uh, so I should mention that in order to get a uh, transmitter uh, uh, registered to an 84, you, you sync it. Um, that gets it on the, the transmitter registration list or what we call that. Um, and, and that's where that encryption uh, key passing happens. So if you were to turn on a, a Q5X transmitter, say put it at 470 megahertz even, and then tune your receiver to 470 megahertz even, um, you'd have to put your receiver in what we call allow mode. Uh, which basically says bypass my tra my registered transmitter list, just pass any Axiom digital transmitter on my frequency. There are some use cases where you have to do that if you can't get to the receiver and do uh, syncing, but it's generally not a, not a feature that we would recommend using. We would recommend syncing all your transmitters to the receivers, and then that's how that encryption key would get passed over. Great. All right. Do the Q5X transmitters support all the same telemetry as the AD mics? 
Paul might have a, a take on that too, but they do. Uh, so when uh, when you download the the new firmware, uh, which will come out when the when the Q5X product is available later in summer, as Occam mentioned earlier, um, you will have the ability to see the battery uh, life, to be able to see the the transmitter type, um, the gain. Um, all of the things that you're used to seeing on an AD transmitter over that side channel, we call it, that's the little row on the bottom of the receiver screen that tells you the transmitter telemetry info. We refer to that as side channel info. So all the side channel info you see for any other AD transmitter, more or less, you will be able to see on the Q5X transmitter. The one exception is uh, Q5X uses an internal lithium ion battery where we'll give you the battery life and we'll also give you the voltage, but we won't actually give you a meter with hours and minutes like we do with our with our rechargeable batteries, uh, but some pretty granular information nonetheless. Great. All right, next question. How does the receiver IR update the transmitter settings from the AD4Q? I'm sorry, can you repeat that one more time? Oh, you know what? I accidentally uh, deleted the question. <laughs> um, oh, that's okay. It was about IR presets and the AD4Q. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, so the Axiom Digital Transmitters uh, all support IR presets via wireless workbench, and Q5X uh, transmitters will be a part of that story as well. So if you want to create specific Q5X IR presets, um, you create them in wireless workbench, you deploy them to the receiver, and then when you sync the transmitter, uh, the Q5X transmitter, um, only uh, certain properties will, will be passed. That's essentially how, how IR presets work. I'm just describing it. Um, that, that feature, just like it does work with all other AD transmitters, will work with Q5X transmitters as well. All right. Are these Q5X transmitters going to be available in these new forms for other manufacturer receivers, ones that have ENG, BAG, CRT, DC-powered receivers? Not the digital versions, no. The analog versions, yes. The digital versions, no. Great. Next question. Since both Mike Commander and Showlink are Zigbee systems, do they interfere with each other when operating in close proximity? Well, I can tell you that they, they generally don't. That's one of the beauties of using um, a technology like Zigbee is that they coordinate themselves on channels. And, um, you know, with with our access point, you can put it in automatic mode. We'll, we'll, we'll scan for the best Zigbee frequency um, or you can automatically park it on a, on a channel. And I believe, uh, Paul, correct me if I'm wrong, the mic commander works the same way. So you have some selectability on which show uh, Zigbee channel you you want to use, um, or it will just automatically pick the best one. Yes, ours ours doesn't automatically select a channel; it has to be selected by the user. Um, so it doesn't it it won't it won't change automatically if there's a high level of interference. Uh, so, but there's a scanner built into the mic commander. So when you go into an environment in a venue, you can scan, look for the uh, the channel that actually is has the least uh, load on it and it's like that channel and the the only important thing obviously is that the transmitters and the mic commander both have to be on the same zigbee channel so um tech note that i'm just creating right now on the fly <laughs> is if you're using automatic mode um you can set the zigbee channel on your mic commander if um, the access point for some reason were to get interference automatic mode would 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 move everything to a new channel um, if you're using manual mode on an 8610, you want to make sure you're not putting it on the same channel as your mic commander, because if you do that, you're going to park your 8610 on a channel that's being used by an, another nearby Zigbee device. So if you like to park your access points on channel 14, for example, you probably want to park your show link. I'm sorry, your, uh, your mic commanders on channel 15 or channel 19, not channel 14. And we, we typically use the the higher end. We typically use channel 25 or 24. Uh, they tend to be the least congested. This is what we found. Yeah, I should mention that too, is that there are some channels that are in the Zigbee range that are just outside of Wi-Fi range. So there are a couple channels you can utilize that are generally free from Wi-Fi. And I noticed that in my use of my commander as well, Paul, it seemed like uh, like your device would kind of prioritize those, which is which makes sense. Yep. And I think to a large extent, our our device may may or may not. But I know that if if it finds that 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 one of those channels is the best, it will it will go there. All right, all right. Next question: How much is runtime extended with HD mode at two milliwatts with the Q5X transmitters? 
I cannot understand. I, I can't answer that right now. I I haven't tested that. All right. It's yeah. I would say that it's comparable to. Um, it's it's just. It will be comparable to the difference between AD transmitters and in two milliwatts and ten milliwatt mode, more or less. Um, so there's you know slightly different slight differences depending on what you know microphone it's driving in, for example. But generally speaking, um, you'll get the same performance benefit that you would out of other any other AD transmitter at two versus ten milliwatts. So significant likely hours of improvement, but we'll, we'll wait for Paul and Q5X to actually publish an official battery life number. <laughs> Sounds great. All right, next question. How does the remote commander connect to a PC? Uh, it the, the mic commander has a uh, micro USB uh, port on the top of it, and you just plug it in with a USB cable, uh, micro USB to USB, and it automatically become that way what it basically at that point the software on the computer is actually running the control system and using the radio in the mic commander as a zigbee radio link great all right is there a new mic commander for axiant or is this the same h1 version no i i should have said that earlier no it's it's there, there is in fact there is a new mic commander it's called the h2 it's so it's an upgrade from the h1 which people would have today the um but they will both run uh they, they were compatible with the our current analog transmitters and our and new axiant digital transmitters and so you can have a mix of of, of digital and analog transmitters and use the same mic commander and the there, there will be an upgrade available for the uh, the existing h1 mic commanders that are out in the marketplace already that will uh give them some increased capability as well but they they should work uh pretty much out of the box today great all right next question do you have links to videos showing the q5x being bent um, other than the still photo that we've already shown uh there's one yes i can put out there if um then i can certainly create some more um <laughs> in yeah i can post that at the end of, i can post a link to that at the end of the uh at the end of the session great all right uh next question how do you program zigbee channels into q5x transmitters to match the mic commander so you do it through the mic commander um and there is a uh section it, as you go through the mic commander there is a whole series of things you can adjust one of the things you can select through the control panel for each transmitter is the uh, zigbee channel that is using so and then there's a separate control panel to set up the mic commander itself for the zigbee channel so in a circumstance where you want to change a zigbee channel you have to have the mic commander on the same frequency as the uh, on the same uh channel that the the transmitter is on you can go you can then change the the channel on the transmitter at which point it will no longer <laughs> communicate with the mic commander then you go to the the uh the setup of the mic commander change it to the same frequent or same channel that you just changed the transmitter to and then they will communicate again so it's a two-step process you first change the transmitter from the mic commander and then change the mic commander to the new frequency that you've just changed the transmitter to. Great. So next is uh, not so much a question, but a comment about the X band. Uh, just a reminder that you must have 941 to 960 megahertz specifically listed on your part 74 license. Just having a license does not entitle operation in X 55. So I just wanted to make that point. That sounds like an RF coordinator. So <laughs> I don't know who that was, but thank you very much. Awesome. Next question. Are there any plans to increase the controller count to more than 32 units? Uh, no, you can use if, if it, simply because it, it, it just becomes too cumbersome in a small display to control more than 32. You can use two mic commanders and you can have different transmitters on each mic commander. So you can use multiple mic commanders and by using multiple mic commanders, you can have as many transmitters as you want. Uh, as long as there's only 32 on each of them. Uh, if you connect the mic commander uh, via the USB and use mic control on a computer, you can go up to 100 transmitters on the on the computer, and then you could do all of your setup 
uh, via the computer screen and have all 100 transmitters displayed on, in one display on, on the computer. And then if you wished then to have two mic commanders or three mic commanders, with three mic commanders, you could, you could control um, 90, 96 uh, transmitters. So it's, it, it just becomes impractical to, to, to control and observe more than 32 on the display of, of the mic commander. Fantastic. All right. And I think that just about wraps up the questions. If I missed your question for some reason, or you have something else that pops up in your head, uh, please feel free to submit that to us by visiting sure.com slash contact and filling out the form there. And we'll get the answer you need. We want to thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you little learned, learned a little something. I know I definitely did. And we'll hope to see you on the next one. Everybody have a great week. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day or night, wherever you are. Just thank Bye -bye. you. Stay safe.